and welcome to another episode of McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we're going to be talking about transposing algebra and formulae. If you'd like to contact me to suggest a video or to ask a question, you can contact me at McClatchyMaths at yahoo.com. This video has been requested today by Blessin. Shout out to Blessin. Thanks for listening. So what does that actually mean to transpose? It's a big word. Basically, we have some terms that you need to understand first before we can talk about what transpose means. We have the subject of a formula. So here's a formula. At the moment, we've got D sitting at the front on one side of the equation. And on the other side of the equation, we have 3MT squared. In that particular example, D is the subject. It sits all alone. Now, transposing is an algebraic technique that we use when we're trying to solve an equation, but we need to find a different variable than the subject. So in this particular formula, we've got D on sitting on one side, and if we were to substitute M and T into the equation with real numbers, we'd be able to find the value of D. But sometimes we might want to rearrange that particular equation and maybe have M as the subject sitting all by itself so that we could find the value of M if we were given D and T. Alternatively, we might want to find T. So we would need to move the 3 and the M away from the T as well as the squared component of T so that we could find that value if we knew what D and M were. Lots of letters, but basically it just means that transposing, we're just trying to get the subject to be something different in a particular formula. So we're rearranging that to make a new subject. So I'm going to do three examples today. The first example is B equals M over H squared. And we want to make M the subject of the formula. So before we start, we need to think about and have a look at the formula itself. Our objective when we're told to make M the subject is we want M sitting all by itself on one side of the equation and everything else, that would be B and H squared sitting on the other side of the equation with the equal sign in, in between them. And at the moment, we can see that B is the subject. So before we actually just jump in and get started, we should have a look and see what's going on, what's happening to M before we get started. So have a look. At the moment, m is divided by h squared. So what we do when we're transposing formulae is we're going to be doing what's called the inverse operation. So the inverse operation just means we do the opposite to that side of the equation to move things around to different sides of the equation. So at the moment, we said that m is divided by h squared. So we know at some point we're going to be multiplying the equation by something in order to get m all alone. Let's have a look at how we do that. Firstly, if I was to multiply both sides of the equation by h squared, what I'm effectively going to be having on one side of the equation is h squared times b, but on the other side of the equation, I've now got h squared divided by h squared, which makes 1. Anything divided by itself gives 1. So that's going to cancel the h squared on that side of the equation. And presto, we've now got h squared b on one side, and m is sitting all alone. It was as easy as that. This is one of the simple examples because we really only had to do one thing to get M to be the subject of the formula. Let's try something a little bit more difficult. I've got example two here. Now we've got a lot more variables this time. We've got an A, a V, a U and a T. And we're asked to make V the subject. So let's have a bit of a think first about what's going on with V. We want V to sit alone. We want a, a to not be the subject, we want V the subject, and at the moment, V is not only divided by T, but it's also got a U being subtracted from it. So we know we're going to have to do at least two things to get V by itself. So let's focus on eliminating fractions first, and this is probably a general rule when you are transposing, is try and eliminate fractions when your subject is involved in one, especially if your subject's in the numerator. So to eliminate a fraction, we're going to multiply both sides by t, which is the denominator at the moment. That's going to make t disappear from the right-hand side of the fraction, because that's going to cancel out. And so we no longer will have a fraction, and t will simply sit on the left-hand side. It'll be at equals v take away u. Now, to get the, v, the u away from the v, we have to add the u to both sides. So we're going to have minus u plus u, that gives zero and plus u on, on the left-hand side. So the left-hand side will now read at plus u, and v will be on the right-hand side. And once again, we are done. So this one took two steps. So it's always good to plan a little bit before you get started and have that little 
few seconds just to think about what is it what is it that you need to do? What are the inverse operations? What is the opposite of divide? What is the opposite of subtract? My last example today has a little bit more complication in it. Once again, not too many steps, but we've got a squared and we've also got a fraction. And this time, H is not sitting on the numerator, it is on the denominator. We want H all alone, so we're going to have to take a few steps to do this. We've also got B the subject. So let's think about what's happening with H. It's squared and it's also um, on the denominator, which means we might have to move things around a couple of times to get H all alone. So once again, I'm going to go with my little general rule. I'm going to try and get rid of the fraction sides of things first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by h squared. What this is going to do effectively is cancel out h squared on the right-hand side of the equation because anything divided by itself gives 1. So now I've moved the h squared to the left. So now on the left-hand side, I've got h squared b and on the right equals m. Now I'm going to divide both sides by b, and this will move b away from the left-hand side to the right-hand side of the equation. So now I'm going to have h squared all by itself, and I'm going to have m over b on the right-hand side. I'm still not finished, though, because now I've got an h squared, and I need it to be h as the subject. So we know that cancelling out a squared is done with the square root. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Now, you can see on the right-hand side of my equation where I had m over b before as a fraction, now I'm going to have the square root of m over the square root of b. I could have also written this a different way. I could have written the fraction m over b with a big square root over the top of it, but either way is acceptable. They both mean the same thing. Now, we know that that square root on the left is cancelled out the squared. And so my final answer is going to be h is equal to the square root of m divided by the square root of b. Once again, I'm done. So it's really important when you're looking at transposing equations that you just have a stop and think beforehand and look and plan and see what it is you have to do. Rather than rushing in and just trying to do things and try and multiply this and divide that, have a think about what are the operations that are happening now and what are the opposite of those operations. It might take two or three steps to make a new subject, but if you take it and plan it, try to do fractions first, you'll usually get to a good answer and a good result. Once again, my name is Natalie McClatchy. You've been watching McClatchy Maths at yahoo.com. And I'd like to acknowledge the textbook that I've um, received the information from today. I've taken these three examples from the Jacarana MathQuest General Mathematics for Queensland textbook. The working in the solutions was all mine, but the questions were from the textbook. Thanks for watching.